Warning. Serious injury can result from experimentation with HHO or Brown's gas. Children should not attempt anything shown on this channel without close adult supervision. Even some big kids. Please, play it safe. Okay, next step is to create the stainless steel plates for the inside of the inverted T-cell. And what I've got here is some scrap 316L stainless steel. You can see I've drawn some circles on the surface of the 316L. What I did to create those circles was I took and sliced a I want to say about a one and a quarter inch section of three inch pipe from my PVC to act as a guide to draw the circles on the surface of the metal. Interestingly enough, what I discovered is that the opening of the three inch pipe, it's not exactly circular. So be real careful when you do this. Um, I discovered that when I turned it 90 degrees, the holes, the, the, the lines didn't line up anymore, or not perfectly anyway. I mean, it looks pretty round, right? But just be aware that you might want to, when you cut the stainless steel rings or the sta circular stainless steel plates out of your material, allow for a little extra grinding so that um, you can get them to fit inside your your opening exactly right. So once again, not having the uh, ability to stamp these out, I'm using my, I guess you call these duck bill sheet metal shears. And what they allow me to do is to go around and now what I'm going to do is create the final cut and go around like so just to the outside of my line all the way around what this is going to produce is an edge that's not exactly flat and in the end I'm going to have to take my hammer against the anvil on my bench vise and just tap these out to make sure that they're perfectly flat before I assemble them inside the inverted T-cell. I don't know how I can show this to you very easily. I'll just give you a quick preview of how it's coming so far. And I'm going to work my way around and cut these plates out as close to circular as I can. And then finish them off on the grinding wheel. That's a pretty good shot right there. You'll also see my fingerprints on the plates, which I'm, of course, going to have to clean off before I perform the final assembly inside the inverted T-cell. So, I've been giving a little thought this afternoon. I haven't really gotten much more done than the uh, first plate that I cut. But I wanted to show you what I've been thinking. I have my piece of PVC pipe that I used to draw the not so perfect circles on my stainless steel, but this is what I have to work with. And I figured, why not use this as a uh, template or at least uh, a, t a test fixture to determine how exactly I want to deal with my stainless steel plates. Do I want to drill holes through them? Do I want to just notch the top of them? Do I want to sand the bottom of them? Do I just want to notch the bottom of them? And I think what I'm going to do is notch both sides. So let me show you what I'm, what I'm thinking here. I'm going to take one of my spacer rings, and I'm just going to set it inside the opening, and I'm going to rotate it, close it up, 
and move it, move it to the edge. So there's one of my spacer rings inserted inside the opening of the three inch section. And I just take my three inch plate, drop it inside there, all right, and I can look at it on the opposite side. And the more I look at this, the more I realize that yes, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's see if I can point this out for you, at the, at the point where I've created a, uh, a seam on the C-ring, I'm just going to take my Dremel tool and I'm going to create an opening at the bottom. That opening that I create at the bottom of the spacer ring is going to be larger than the opening that I create at the bottom of the stainless steel plate. And the reason for that is because adhesive, the 3M uh, adhesive that I'm going to use to set these in place, is actually going to seal off the edge of the plate. That way the electrolyte can flow underneath the plate without actually touching the plate. And the same goes true for the gas exiting the top. Now you might think we need large holes for the gas to exit at the top. And actually, that's not true. Because when you think about it, I was using a, uh, a uh, basketball filler needle and putting two to three liters a minute through that, no problem at all, as long as you have enough pressure. So the opening on the top of here is actually going to be considerably larger, maybe about, I don't know, eighth of an inch. Sounds like a good number, right? And that eighth of an inch hole is going to pass all of the gas coming out. Now, as you get closer and closer to the center, you're going to get more and more volume of gas it's because you have more plates producing gas behind it, pushing the gas forward to get it out through the center of the tube uh, and, and up the middle of the electrolyzer. But all in all, I think that's going to work extremely well. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to finish cutting out the rest of my plates. You know, the thought occurs to me, these are very sharp edges, and I'm holding them in my bare hands, gripping it as I'm trying to cut it. I'm going to put some work gloves on. Much better, especially considering how accident prone I happen to be sometimes. And away we go. That one came out way less than perfect, but still, I can take this over to the grinding wheel and I can finish it up. Obviously, I'm going to be here for quite a while, so I'm not going to bother filming any more of these, but you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> 